title of my project is uh, Locations of Drug and Robbery Offenses, uh, Social Analyses Based on Socialist Organization Theory. Uh, the focus of my research is based upon two questions. Uh, the first being, uh, is there a correlation between the locations of drug and robbery offenses? And the second being, uh, what explanation is provided by a social disorganization theory for these two specific offenses? And so the theory that I used uh, and applied to my data in this study uh, is known as social disorganization theory. Uh, although there's a lot to this theory and uh, many different perspectives and different studies that focus on different aspects of the theory, uh, the one study I'm focusing on mostly will be the work of Sean McKay. Uh, their study was in, uh, took place in Chicago in the early to mid-1900s, and they focused on juvenile offenders, or more specifically, uh, the zones of the city where crime was taking place and uh, the locations of the juvenile offenders and where they lived. And so the three variables, or three of the variables they focused on in their study were uh, poverty, mobility, and heterogeneity, or the diversity of the population. And so they found uh, in some that the juvenile offenders lived in areas or in zones of the city uh, with higher percentage of the population living below the poverty line. Mobility of residency, meaning people are changing households constantly, and also a uh, heterogeneous population or a very diverse population uh, in terms of ethnicity. Uh, they also found uh, that uh, examining a city in concentric zones, uh, you'll see the inner city in the middle, uh, concentric zones expanding outward to the outermost zone known as the commuter zone. Uh, this is more of a suburbia type, uh, and you'll find that uh, these are areas uh, that are more socially organized have a strong uh, economic system in that area. It's economically stable. Uh, you also have uh, a strong social structure, uh, more roots for generations is the types of places where families move to and stay for generations and kind of establish roots. Uh, and in these areas, you have lower rates of uh, lower crime rates. Uh, and they found that in the inner city areas, uh, the, namely the inner city zone and the zone just outside, which I'll get into in a moment, uh, there are higher rates of crime, and in these areas, there's more of a social disorganization uh, due to these factors. And so the zone that I focus on in my study, uh, which is, uh, in my opinion, one of the more interesting zones uh, if you examine a city in concentric zones, uh, would be the zone just outside the inner city known as the zone in transition. Uh, this is typically a zone that experiences social disorganization, and that's due to little or no investment uh, in the community. Um, that's in terms of uh, economic investment or just investment from you know, the government uh, or public institutions, uh, schools and things. Uh, they're kind of a disadvantaged area. Uh, in this area, you're also going to find low paying jobs, uh, low rent, low uh, members of this uh, residents are generally members of the lower socioeconomic class and very diverse populations. The goal here, um, and it's kind of uh, like a a lot of our parents told us, you know, we gave you this life, we want you to give you know, your children a better life and their children a better life, and so on. It's kind of like the evolution of your family. And uh, so the goal is, this is the area where a lot of uh, first generation immigrants will live in. And generally it's not by choice, this is where there are low skilled jobs, uh, just outside the inner city. Um, and Sean, the case study in Chicago is more of an industrial sense, today it's more uh, unskilled jobs, not so much industrial, mill work, or factory work, um, more just low paying jobs. And the goal is to move to the outer skirts of the city, um, the zone that I mentioned, the community zone, uh, which is more socially organized with lower rates of crime. And so I went about this study uh, two forms of data I collected or obtained. Uh, the first being crime data, which I obtained from the local police department's uh, crime analysis unit. This consisted of all the drug and robbery offenses from 2006 to 2009 in the one neighborhood of the mall that I'm studying. Uh, that, these offenses consisted of 291 drug offenses and 126 robberies. The robberies, uh, uh, sorry, the drug offenses include um, all drug-related offenses, which is you know, drug trafficking or possession or um, paraphernalia, anything related to drugs. This uh, second form of data was a census data collected from the 2000 uh, U.S. Census. Um, and that's where I'm going to have uh, my data to relate the crime and uh, the characteristics of the community. 
Uh, I'm doing so, uh, you'll see the maps, I have a series of maps that I'll show you where I'm going to overlay the uh, crime data and the census data. And I did so uh, using ArcGIS, which is a geographic information system. Um, this allows you to kind of make technologically advanced uh, pinpoint maps. You know, they're probably all familiar with uh, the maps where detectives or police officers will have pinpoints on the map and will kind of show where crime's taking place. This is kind of like that new, well, this program can be used to uh, have like a newer approach on that. The three variables I'm examining uh, the percent of the population living below the poverty line, uh, the mobility of residency in the past five years, if you've changed your home in the last five years, and the measurement of diversity. And so the neighborhood I'm studying, uh, it's spelled Centralville, uh, it's pronounced Centerville. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> but this is the, the city of Lowell, Massachusetts. Um, if you guys are familiar with that, it's a city about 35 miles north of Boston. Um, and for the sake of uh, these slides, uh, every map up is north. I wasn't able to, the computer wouldn't read the north arrows. Uh, so you'll see here the highlighted area is Centerville, uh, just south of it. Um, on the other side of the Merrimack River, we have the downtown of the inner city area. So you see this lies just outside the inner city. And so uh, to illustrate the crime data, uh, instead of putting crime uh, data points all over the neighborhood of Centerville, uh, for the robberies and drug offenses. Uh, I'm using hotspot analyses or hotspots to show where the crime occurs most frequently and the density in those areas. And so there are, crime does take place in other areas other than shaded hotspots here. However, these are um, you know, the hotspots where it occurs most frequently. So you can see that there are two uh, noticeable robbery hotspots um, in the southern region of Senegal and the western region of Senegal. The darker the shade, um, the more dense the crime. And you'll also see, uh, this is robberies 2006-2009. Um, similar hotspots for drug offenses from 2006-2009, to um, identical locations for the most part. Uh, the drug hotspot in Southern Centerville, you'll notice here, is uh, slightly larger, and that's due to the fact that there are about twice as many uh, drug offenses in the data I have. And also because the area that it expands into is more residential, and so you'll find uh, more drug offenses in residential areas, at least that's what I found, um, as people recreationally using um, my personal property. Uh, it should also be noted, just to kind of give you guys a feel of what this area is like, uh, this is just outside the downtown, maybe inner city area of Lowell. And so you're gonna have uh, a small city feel with a lot of rented properties, I believe about half of the properties in this neighborhood, uh, Centerville, are uh, rented and not owned. So you're going to have you know small uh, beauty shops and um, clothing stores and things like that uh, with a rented apartments above, just to kind of give you a feel of what the area looks like. Um, and if you notice here, both of the hot spots for uh, robberies and drug offenses are on busy roads leading up to the bridges, which connect to the downtown inner city area with the accessibility there. And so now I'm going to go through a series of maps with the three variables I'm examining social organization perspective. And you'll see here that the crime hotspots for robberies are overlaid with the census data. And so the yellow to red shades indicate the uh, increase in population of, uh, or increase in the percent of the population moving below the poverty line. So here are robberies and poverty. And you can see that uh, the areas where crime is occurring and the areas where there is no crime, which is also just as important to look at uh, you see that the two hotspots, namely the larger hotspot, falls between two census block groups um, with the highest percentages of the population living below the poverty line in all of Senegal in the southern region, and the hotspot in western Senegal also falls in a census block group with a 17 to 32 percent of the population living below the poverty line. You'll see a, a, a similar uh, map here with the same census data, except now we have the uh, drug crimes or the drug hotspots overlaid. And you'll see that the hotspots fall on the same census block groups, um, with the exception of the hotspot in the southern center, which expands more to that residential area, like a point of four. And you can notice that along the northeastern uh, border of Centerville, uh, borders the town of Drake, which is a very small, quiet town. Um, north of Lowell, uh, that it's uh, 
uh, the color yellow. And here you see that less than two and a half percent of the population is living below the poverty line. And this is uh, kind of the area that I refer to as uh, the zone, or the commuter zone, where people are living in a more stable um, community with uh, more of a social organization. Uh, the second variable I looked at was mobility of residency. Uh, here you can see that uh, the robbery hotspots falling in the census block groups with higher percentages of um, mobility. Uh, this is uh, also, just a reminder, this is uh, census data where people will change their households in the last five years. So this uh, hotspot in southern Senegal falls between two of the census block groups with higher percentages of mobility. The hot spot in Western Senegal um, falls in um, medium range. However, if you look closely, the medium range is 43 to 53 percent of the population changing households. Um, that's still a significant amount, although it's not shaded red. Um, it's still about half the population changing that household in the last five years. And the drug hot spots here, you can see with the same census data of mobility uh, falling in the same census block as for the most part. The third variable I looked at was the measurement of diversity. Um, this variable, I'm looking at um, diversity in terms of ethnicity or different ethnicities represented by a census block group. So the census data I obtained, um, I used a formula that's similar to uh, ecological studies where they uh, examine the different species present in an ecosystem. And so I'm looking at that in terms of the different ethnicities represented in the census block group. And here you have um, the darker shaded areas are going to be areas with more diverse populations, and the lighter shaded areas, close to yellow, will be areas with uh, less diverse populations. And you can see that's overlaid with the robbery hotspots here, and um, the hotspots fall in the census block groups with more diverse populations around it, um, and the same or as you see here with uh, drug hotspots. And then to point out again, uh, the area, the outskirts of Senegal, or the outskirts of Lowell as well, since this is the most important point of Lowell, uh, you'll see that uh, the northeastern region, um, which I should have noted earlier, is referred to as Christian Hill. It's um, the area with uh, more of a suburbia feel, and uh, this area has, there is crime in this area, but it's not a significant amount as opposed to Southern Senegal with the hot spots. So if you were to look at this map with uh, crime data points on it, you would see crimes do occur up there, or take place up there, um, however not a significant amount. And that this area is a uh, less diverse population, um, has less percent of the population living below the poverty line, as well as um, less mobile. It's, uh, Area where people will stay for generations and kind of establish roots as families. So, in conclusion, um, my study found that there is a correlation between the locations of drug and robbery offenses. And as you saw in the first two maps, with the oh sorry, I was watching this the whole time. Um, the two hot spots between uh, drug and robbery offenses fall in nearly the exact locations um, as each other, and you see the overlap. And then when you look look at the maps with the social disorganization variables, uh, you see that um, theory does provide explanation for the location of these crimes. And looking at um, the areas that are uh, disorganized um, and the areas that are organized, you can see the difference in um, the hotspots of crime, or at least in terms of poverty, mobility, residency, and diversity. And so the limitations, I have two main limitations of the study. Um, unfortunately, as I'm sure you all saw the money commercials on the census data this year. Um, this was the 2010 census. And so the data I'm using is from the 2000 census. Um, and so it's, I guess in so many words, the oldest data I could be using. Um, if I did this study next summer, it would be fresh and more accurate data, which would be great. Um, but it still does provide a good background of understanding of uh, the characteristics of the community I studied. And the second limitation would be the crime data. Um, the data I obtained from the local police uh, is drug and robbery offenses. So if you look at the drug offenses, um, it's only drug arrests. So although there are more than robberies, I'm only including the drug arrests. And so um, 
that also ties into a where police patrol more and uh, police discretion, um, you know, if they choose to make an arrest in certain cases. And so only the arrests are included here, as well as um, for the robbery data, um, it's only robberies reported to the police. Um, if they don't report to the police, uh, records are not kept, and I don't have that data. 